Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. There's a common perception in Age of Empires that players who advance faster are generally better, and there's definitely some truth to that. Assuming you aren't idling your town center, being able to advance quickly says good things about both your efficiency and resource balance, while attacking even a tiny bit earlier in a feudal rush can be critical to its effectiveness. Scouts need to come out before the opponent's walls are up, and archers need to start building their numbers. But have you ever been tempted to stay in the Dark Age to get just one extra villager? In this video, I want to focus on the trade-off there and try to quantify how much extending your Dark Age by one villager to go up 25 seconds later might help your economy. I'll then chat with one of the best players in the game today to get his thoughts on the question. Let's check it out. Before we start, there are a few assumptions here we're going to have to make. The first is that your town center is working continuously, whether it be on villagers, loom, or advancing to the next age. As long as that's true, when you advance doesn't ultimately impact your number of villagers you have a couple of minutes down the road. The one exception is when you reach castle age because you can make more town centers to speed up creating villagers, and that's something separate we'll have to look at afterward. I also want to quickly clarify what I'm not talking about, which is exactly how many resources you have as you hit feudal. Of course, if you go up faster, you'll have less to work with at that point, since you haven't had as long for your villagers to work, so it's not a fair comparison. You run into this issue with Malay because of their faster advancing, where you go up with a normal number of villagers and hit the next stage without enough resources to actually do the things you want to do. Instead, here we're comparing everything at a set time to see how the total resources collected compare. With that out of the way, let's take a look at various timings for scout rushes. Whether you advance with 19, 20, or 21 villagers, as long as the town center keeps working, you'll have exactly 22 villagers with loom at 10 and a half minutes. The difference is just in a fast build, you make the last few villagers after you advance instead of just before. For that reason, it's tempting to think that maybe there isn't a difference in the long run, economically speaking. Maybe an earlier advance is just a bit tighter to pull off, but your economy ends in the same place. Unfortunately, that's not quite how it works. To see where the difference lies, you need to look at the time spent advancing. That's 2 minutes and 10 seconds, or 2 minutes and 35 seconds if we include Loom as part of that as well, where your number of villagers is locked in. That means the more villagers you go up with, the more you're going to collect over that time period. The question of how much economic benefit you get can actually be reframed as how much does one more villager give you in 2 minutes and 35 seconds. A bit of estimation has to come in here since gather rates can vary depending on the resource, efficiency of your layout, idle time, and other factors. If we say it's something like 20 to 22 resources per minute, the math suggests that delaying a feudal rush by one villager nets you an extra 52 to 57 resources when you reach feudal. That's really not that much. It's not even enough to create a single farm. I don't know about you, but that's a bit of a surprise to me, and I've sometimes tried to be a bit greedy with delaying my Dark Age a few villagers more than necessary because I was under the impression it would give a meaningful boost to my Feudal Age economy, and it just doesn't seem to be as big of an effect as I always assumed. Up to this point though, I've kind of overlooked something, which is the eco upgrades you can get in Feudal Age. The main one I'm thinking about is Double Bit Axe, which lets your Lumberjacks work 20% faster. Does getting that a bit earlier offset the extra production of a villager? Double Bit Axe adds between 4 to 5 extra wood per lumberjack per minute, so with 10 lumberjacks that's 19 extra wood for every villager you cut from your Dark Age. That earlier 50 to 60 resources I said the extra villager is getting you is now instead more like 30 to 40 if you get Double Bit Axe as soon as possible. Exact numbers aren't critical here, but again it's reinforcing the fact that extending Dark Age longer than necessary has very little payoff and a pretty obvious drawback when it comes to your ability to deal damage with a rush. On reflection, it might not be that surprising though that something called rushing rewards advancing quickly and not intentionally delaying, but what about the fast castle strategy? The point is to get to castle age quickly, but the strategy involves intentionally delaying your feudal age in order to leapfrog straight through. How much difference does one more villager in Dark Age make in that case? There are lots of opinions out there of how many Dark Age villagers you need for the fast castle, and anything from 25 to 27 villagers is pretty common. 
You can maybe go up with less or more, but that's the most popular range I've seen. The thing is though, within that range by 16 and a half minutes, you'll theoretically have the same population, no matter how you do it. Yet, if you run the numbers with these same assumptions as before, every villager you extend your Dark Age adds 105 resources at that point. In this case, you can start to see why it might make sense to delay. If you want to be able to make knights at 16 and a half minutes, going up with 27 instead of 25 villagers in Dark Age means somewhere around 200 more resources to work with. That can cover a lot of little inefficiencies and make early castle age a lot smoother. Overall, it's the more compelling case for delaying villagers and the reward is significantly higher. So why not make 30, 40, or even 50 villagers in Dark Age if you're fast castling then? The answer is not only are you basically playing SimCity at that point, but there's an economic cost to delaying your extra town centers. Let's take two players, one going 25 versus someone going with 27 villagers in Dark Age, both fast castling into three town centers. The 27 villager Dark Age player reaches castle age 50 seconds later, with something like 200 more resources collected in total. The 25 villager Dark Age player though is 50 seconds further along in putting up their next two town centers. All else being equal, that'll lead to a 4 villager advantage, permanently. In 2.5 minutes, they'll have caught up in resources, and over the long run, the player that went up faster will have the better economy. It's a similar idea to the Kumin Fast Feudal to make their second town center quickly. The tricky part of the fast castle into three town centers is timing it just right so that you're up as soon as possible, but can still make those two town centers and keep them running. The different versions of the fast castle and when to go up faster versus when to go up later is one of the topics that I ask Hera about in our interview. And speaking of which, this is about as far as the math alone is going to take us. Seeing the numbers can help quantify the trade-offs, but there are a lot of practical considerations, and I thought it would be interesting to add the perspective of an expert player. Hera kindly agreed to sit down for a chat, so let's listen in on that conversation. All right, welcome, man, and always nice to have you on here. I was hoping to chat a bit about delaying going up by a villager or two for the extra resources and get your thoughts on that. So I think we all know there's a trade-off between going up quickly and making sure you have the economy to actually do something with it. And I know pros are always refining their builds to get that balance just right. Would you say it's a more common mistake at lower levels for people to go up too quickly or too slowly and conservative? Uh, well, well, first of all, thank you for having me back on the channel. It's always a pleasure. I definitely think that most people have problems because they're going up too late. And not only would they go up too late, they'd also be waiting with their initial like scouts or archers too long at home. So I think it's they're taking too long because usually resources for them aren't an issue. It's really just you know the speed of how they're getting their rush outs. So I would definitely say that they're going up too late, uh, like way too many villagers or at least having too much idle time in the early game, uh, more so than it is um, going up too early and not having the resources to perform the rush. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, you know, Getting away from amateur level and now at a little bit more pro level, would you say that it's fair that builds have gotten faster at the highest levels over time or is it kind of peaked for a while now? So there are several reasons as to why rushes have been getting faster and faster, so meaning at a lower pop throughout the years. And I think the main reason is that when a rush starts at, say, let's say 22 pop scout, which is very popular, uh, let's say a few years back, maybe like 10 years or maybe like you know a bit less than that, seven years ago, people have started to adapt defensive strategies at that kind of timing. And so in order to find a, an advantage or find an edge when attacking, people have just sped up those strategies and tried to catch your opponent off guard by being there like 25 seconds earlier. And that's why we're seeing these days 21 or 20 pop scouts are popular with most civilizations. Now, there are obviously other factors, um, you know, one of them being people have been using walls more often. And so, you know, they have more time to wall up if it's at 22 pop that you're attacking them or that you're going up to attack them with scouts. And also um, with the constant changes of the game, the balance patches we've seen over the years, houses now cost five less wood, which helps out here and there. Some civs got better eco bonuses for the early game that lets us do better rushes with those civs. So I think it's a combination of those three points that kind of leads to uh, f uh, faster builds and uh, more aggressive rushes. Yeah, totally. One thing I found has also helped for me, and I don't know if you can tell me, is this the same for you? Like the queuing of villagers as well to get them to do from one task automatically to the next has just helped clean up Dark Ages quite a bit, at least like between sheep and stuff in particular. Oh yeah, uh, actually that's, that's a really good point. Um, so not only does that make it easier, but it actually, it actually lets you do stuff that you weren't able to do before because um, you'll never get like perfect transitions between sheep. Like the best you can do before is time it, but now you can literally get perfect transitions every time between sheep 
Uh, and then on the wood line as well, you can always have them on different areas or, uh, you know, after they finish the lumber camp, you can tell them which tree to go for. So there's little things like that that can A, make it easier to do certain things and B, like actually make us do things that was impossible before, most notably the passing between the sheep at instant timing with the shift queuing. So that's something that, you know, helps us with like 10 or 20 food in the dark age, which again could let us go up a little bit faster. Yeah, no, that, that seems huge. Even that 10 food, I know, in the hands of a good player can be a lot. Um, do you think it's got anywhere left to go? Are those times going to keep going down? Or do you think we've hit, like, the theoretical maximum here? Um, I mean, it's hard to say because uh, with no more balance changes, would players actually try to do rushes faster? I would have to probably say no uh, for the most part. Like, overall, no. I think we're at a place where it's pretty optimized for speed, but still being able to afford what you need to afford. Uh, however, I wouldn't be surprised if meta changes within the game right now, even without balance changes, and then that kind of meta shift forces uh, different strategies. Although I don't think it'll be faster strategies, I think it'll just be different ones. Yeah, things do seem pretty optimized these days. Okay, so I kind of want to pick your brain about a few common strategies, like we've mentioned, the scout rush, and how you think going up with a different number of villagers impacts either the usefulness or just something about it. So why don't we start with scouts, because you mentioned that one. And you mentioned the 22 pop versus 21 pop, and now we've been 20 pop. Uh, I was wondering if you could touch on sort of the, those different flavors and why there are those differences. And is one just a more advanced version of another, or do they all have a place? Yeah, so the first point I want to touch on is the how advanced the builders are. In general, the earlier you up, the more advanced that builder is. So doing a 20 pop scout builder perfectly is something I'd only recommend to an intermediate to advanced player. So someone who's like... 1500 plus on DE to attempt that, you know, if you're lower level than that on, you know, in general, I definitely recommend 21 pop. And I think 22 pop is something that's extremely beginner and something that you probably should avoid uh, just because I think it is just too slow at this current uh, time. People have been reacting uh, to it. You know, people have too much, uh, an easier time reacting to 22 pop. So I think 21 pop is like my beginner thing. And then 20 pop is like my more advanced builder that I recommend to people. Now, that's not the only factor that goes into it, of course. 20 pop is hard to achieve with civs, uh, with civilizations without eco bonuses. So if we take, let's consider something like uh, Saracens, for example, that don't get any early or early game bonuses. Going 20 pop is almost impossible to afford scout production after like the first one or two, unless you lure one or two deers in the Dark Age. Another factor uh, you know, that comes into play is how much you want to be walling in Dark Age. Because if you're walling in Dark Age, you ca usually can't do 20 pop even with an eco bonus because you're going to have that one vill idle and obviously you've been investing that wood into the walls, um, which will kind of take away from that food you, you want to be massing up um, as fast as possible. So those are definitely the factors that impact the 20 uh, pop scout rush, even at the pro level where we're assuming the skills are you know up there. Um, in general, though, I will say that the faster you're executing the rushes, the better it is, the more chances you'll have of actually dealing damage with them. But again, there are situations where you want to just prioritize the walling and don't care to get the fastest rush possible. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think would be the... I assume you're going to say Mongols have the fastest rush, or maybe Lithuanians. Uh, how fast do you think would be like the absolute fastest you could do scouts to where it's even remotely usable? Yeah, so I, th I think Mongols are still probably the fastest. Lithuanians are definitely close, but I'd say those two are the fastest ones to perform a scout rush. Um, Mongols recently got nerfed with their hunt. It's down to 40% faster collecting rate, you know, from 50%. I think that was a couple patches ago. After the nerf, now at currently 40% faster rates, I would think that the fastest you want to be going up with Mongols, from my experience, is 17 pop. However, I do think the 18 population is just a little bit, uh, you know, safer. Um, again, usually with Mongols, you want to be luring one or two deer to make this possible because A, you're using their hunt bonus more, and B, uh, you, you generally just need the deer for a fast scout rush. And so I would definitely say if you want the fastest, it's 17 pop with a couple of deer. Yeah, that seems very fast. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Catches your point off guard for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you want to talk about archers now? And I, I think you mentioned when we were playing online together, and I was Japanese, I don't know if that factors into it, but you were suggesting 22 pop, if I remember that correctly, which seems crazy to me for archers. I always think of them as like, you know, 23 or even 24 pop so it sounds like that's come down or maybe i was just doing it in a sort of novice way um do you mind commenting on the the different populations for archer rush as well yeah so and just to put your mind at ease spirit it actually has come down it used to be like 
The recommendation of a few years ago was actually 23 population archers. I'm not sure exactly why it came down. Again, it might play out to some of the factors I talked about before with the cheaper houses and generally this, the game has sped up uh, and, you know, civs with better eco bonuses popped up as well. So, you know, with, throughout those factors nowadays, 22 pop archers is quite common and some civs can even do 21 pop, even 20 pop with something like Khmer who doesn't need a barracks to actually make the archer range. You can argue 20 pop uh, archer build uh, is, is possible. and um, and I think, you know, it's the same reasoning with the Scout Rush. As long as you can go up fast and afford what you want to afford, with it, which is two range archer production villagers and then save up for a blacksmith pretty much to get fletching. As long as you can afford all of that, the faster, the better. The problem is with archers, you usually have to wall up your map more so than the Scout build because your unit isn't mobile. So that's why I would definitely recommend 22 pop is your bread and butter archer build. Uh, even if you have somewhat of an eco bonus, because it just lets you wall up your base, get those two ranges down, start producing archers, and it doesn't really compromise your vill production or anything like that, or your ability to save up for castleage afterwards. So it has sped up from 23, 24, but I don't think going lower than 22 in most cases is uh, is a good idea. Yeah, it's interesting. I had a very visceral reaction when you first said that, and yet even just making this video and seeing that every villager you delay, you only get about 50 resources more. I can definitely see why, you know, something like you mentioned, the Khmer don't have to build a barracks. So that's 175 wood right there. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, that's like three villagers faster, and it, it comes out to about the same anyway. So it's interesting to see, yeah, how much that lines up. Yeah, and, you know, just on that, on that note, I just want to comment that, you know, the difference between saving 50 resources to be able to get to your opponent, like, 25 seconds faster, that getting there faster could actually potentially let you get a villager kill and we've seen your previous videos and we know just how valuable that early villager kill can actually be. So uh, you guys have to just keep in mind that, you know, when we're talking about marginal numbers here, it could give you an advantage that actually ends up being much more than the, the marginal numbers we're talking about right now. So I know one popular variation of the Archer Rush is to do Men at Arms first as the opening, if I've got that right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So why Men at Arms has been popularized recently uh, is because going straight archers in a 1v1 can actually lead to your opponent going for the immediate counter, which is the skirmishers. You're not able to get any damage done if your opponent already has the counter unit skirms already on the field. So what Men at Arms lets you do is that you'll open Men at Arms, which does delay your archer archer ranges. Again, you're going up 22 pop for the Men at Arm rush, but your ranges will be you know dropped down later. However, it lets you get some pressure on to see what your opponent's doing, prevent him from opening skirmishers, and then it lets you also adapt you know, behind it. So behind the men arm rush, you can either go archers or go skirmishers, uh, you know, or even go scouts. It gives you a little bit more flexibility, whereas the pure archer build is kind of predictable, kind of slow, and kind of forces you into that one unit. Yeah, I can definitely see the advantages of having that flexibility. Switching now to the fast castle. Now, obviously, most players learn a 28 plus 2 fast castle at some point, even if they don't follow an exact plan for every villager. And I know much more aggressive forms of the fast castle exist, but again, there's always that drawback to going up faster, both because you're gaining about 100 resources every villager you delay, but also because there's so many expensive things to afford at the start of Castle Age, like town centers, stables, knights, etc. And I was just wondering, where do you think the right balance is with all of that? Uh, yeah, that one's a, yeah, that one's a really tricky question to answer for me, actually. I do have some experience playing Arena more often these days than before because it's in the map pool. So I have experimented a little bit with fast castle build builders from what I've seen, which is definitely not the most experienced player to talk about this. But uh, from what I've seen, I can definitely see that going up later for a fast castle isn't always a bad thing compared to the feudal rush. Because when you're going for a fast castle, the important thing at, that, at this point is to actually to be able to afford all the upgrades or all the things you want to do in castle age. Whereas in Feudal Age, it's just to get up the scouts faster, which are generally kind of cheap, for example. Um, so for, let's say, like a fast castle into like one stable knights or two stable knights, whatever the case may be, if you want to make some knights, you probably have to go like 27 or 28 um, because you need to afford the second wit upgrade and you need to afford one or two stable knights right off the bat. And that takes more farms, takes more bills on gold, and generally you need the time to get those resources in. However, on the other hand, if you want to add a town center, if, you, if you're planning just to go fast castle into just a boom, into just adding two town centers, you probably want to go up on like 25 or 26 population because the faster you get the town centers, the faster you get the vill production up and that, that leads to a better economy. 
And also, dropping two town centers and going for a boom is a lot cheaper than actually wanting to make military at the start of Castle Age. Yeah, good point. Okay, so I thought we'd wrap up with a couple of trivia questions. Curious to hear, what's the fastest advance that you can ever remember doing? Oh boy. Um, Feudal or castle, whatever, however you want to interpret that. Okay, uh, so in a competitive game, I would say um, the fastest advance, I think I'm going to go with a Feudal Age, and I think I've done a 16 pop Mongol rush before, and that was probably my fastest that I've done. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Did you have to idle the town center for that? Do you remember? Uh, no, I think I just had to learn a lot of deers. There might have been like five second out of time, but it was nothing notable, like that significant. I just had to learn a lot of deers and send only two on wood at the start of Feudal Age. There you go. Think it on the fly. Uh, curious about the slowest. So ever had like a 50 villager dark age or anything wild like that? Uh, yeah, actually, when I when the Goths had the discount of the militia at uh, sorry, when the, yeah, when the Goths had the full discount of militia, the 35% in dark age, uh, I, I was messing around with some builds and I would go up to like like 50 villager dark ages, like you said, because I'm spamming militia from like two or three barracks at the, in the dark age at the time. But that's like a cheesy <laughs> strategy with goths, and it's no longer possible, unfortunately. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted. So that's all my questions. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Always nice to have you on. Glad to see you're having so much success these days, and it's been fun jumping into a couple games with you recently as well. If people want to hear more of your insights and see some of this in action, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, so I have actually a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel. Um, it's just uh, Hera underscore AOC on Twitch and then Hera Age of Empires 2 on YouTube. And I've actually been uploading some of the games we played on my own channel, uh, which is pre pretty cool. So definitely people should check that out. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for coming on and keep up the great work. Perfect. You too, man. So hopefully that gives you a few new ideas to incorporate into your games. I definitely recommend checking out Hera's stuff if you're looking to learn some build orders or see some high level gameplay. That's all for this one, though. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.